Welcome back. Raquel Pacheco is running against Republican State Senator Ileana Garcia. Millions of dollars will be spent to help Garcia win re-election, while Pacheco will be lucky if she has one-tenth of the money that Garcia will spend. Instead, Pacheco is hoping that one issue will define this race, abortion. Pacheco argues she would defend reproductive rights, while Garcia not only voted for the 15-week abortion ban, she would also support eliminating abortion in all cases, including rape and incest. I spoke to Pacheco about why she feels so strongly about this issue. The first time I walked into a Planned Parenthood, I was 15 years old, and it was truly a blessing to me to feel like I had a safe haven in a community that was there of medical experts who were ready to help me understand my changing body, understand um, the challenges involved with, uh, with, you know, women's reproductive organs, understand the importance of staying on top of my reproductive health, of having yearly exams, understanding the risks of socially transmitted diseases, and, you know, the different forms of birth control available for both males and females. Um, wait, let me, let me just stop you there for a second. How did you find your way into a Planned Parenthood clinic? Well, there was one in my hometown and teenage girls talk amongst themselves and the word spreads quickly. Um, I found it through networking with my friends, asking them, where do you go? Where do you get help? And how important um, was that for you to be able to go somewhere where you were able to get good, clear information as opposed to just sort of you know, you hear, well, just learn it on the streets as opposed to right. doing what yeah. you were able to do, right? Look, Jim, it is literally, it was life-changing for me. You know, 10 years old, I land here. 14, 15 years old, I'm walking into Planned Parenthood. 19 years old, I'm joining with the Connecticut Army National Guard, serving military. It literally gave me the tools that I needed to make very clear decisions about my life. I went on to become a college student, uh, the first one in my family to graduate from college. I opened my own business at the age of 22. And then, then at the age of 37 is when I got pregnant and decided to have a child. So it afforded me this tremendous tool in freedom, which is what this country is about, to make my own decisions and to make very, you know, thought out and planned, um, you know, to really figure out which direction I wanted to take my life in. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want to get overly personal with you, but I know you've spoken about this, so I know it's something you feel, feel is important. Again, I don't, I'm not saying this to embarrass you at all, but when you became pregnant at 37, that was not a planned pregnancy. Is that correct? Correct. correct. That and, was not. And, and you had you had some choices that you had to make. I was 37 years old. Any woman 35 and above who gets pregnant is automatically considered a high risk pregnancy, which means that now that there's a whole slew of tests that you have to take, one of which is an amniocentesis, which is the extraction of the amniocentesis fluid to test for very serious uh, developmental uh, issues with the fetus. Um, Spina bifida, for example, is one of the things that they test for uh, during that exam. That test is not conducted at its very earliest at 20 weeks. That's the earliest that test can be conducted. So that means, excuse me, so that means that women all across our state who are in their mid 30s, most of whom probably already have children at home, um, are now, because of this 15 week ban that my opponent voted for, are now in this position where at 20 weeks, 22 weeks, they could be carrying a dead fetus and are still being forced to carry the fetus until delivery. These are cruel and extremist laws that have real impacts on women's lives, on their families' lives. You know, another example, an ectopic pregnancy. This is a pregnancy where the fertilized egg implants outside of the uterus. Assuming that happens to uh, someone's wife, there, you know, and she goes to the emergency room and you're, you're, you have two kids at home and your wife has an ectopic pregnancy. You go to the emergency room. That woman cannot get the life-saving treatment. And this is a deadly situation and ectopic pregnancy will kill you. So you're now putting women and families in a position where they are literally leaving children behind because of my opponent's religious convictions. This is absolutely cruel and extreme. And so you know, I have personal friends that I've talked to who have family members who have gone through this. I mean, a very dear friend of mine 
his sister-in-law found out uh, at about 22 weeks that her, her fetus was missing some very vital organs and would, would die shortly after birth. And she's a highly religious woman, very Catholic, uh, very anti-abortion. Um, but this is real life, right? When it hits you, you have to make real life decisions. And so, you know, she sat with it for a week. She cried for a week. It was a tough decision. And then she terminated. Now, another thing that's important to note is that if you don't terminate, you risk A, losing fertility, so you can no longer have children, or B, dying from infection. So again, I just want to say these are cruel and extremist positions. So often, I focus and others focus on the failure to provide exceptions in the cases of rape and incest. But so much of what you've been talking about isn't cases of rape and incest, which are, you know, which hopefully become rare pregnancies as a result, but everyday life for, for women who are trying to make choices and trying to navigate through the circumstances of their life and make the best decisions they can for them and their families. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the part that often gets, gets missed. Everyone sort of talks about abortion. Well, you've got, I mean, I've heard people, I mean, I heard Senator Rubio the other day in an interview with me say, it's four months. If you can't make a decision within four months, then, uh, then shame on you. But well, that's not Senator the case. Rubio needs, Senator Rubio needs an education. Well, I think um, Senator Ileana Garcia she, said she this, most said certainly this, does. She most certainly, you know, I've I've actually heard my opponent say that women use abortion as a method of birth control. I mean, not only is that incredibly a ridiculous statement, a really cruel statement, it's incredibly inaccurate. I have yet to meet a single woman in my life, and I'm going to be 48 years old November 2nd. I have yet to meet a woman who has ever used. Uh, you know, abortion as, as a method of birth control. And, and additionally, women who are having abortions at 20 weeks or 21 weeks, overwhelmingly, almost without exception, they're doing it for medical reasons. Um, it's not about whether you can or cannot decide within five months. It's about medical reasons. And also, it's about decisions between women and their families. What in the world does our government, what right does it have to come into our homes and to interfere with that process, with our faith, with our with our medical advisors, with our family, you know, talk about government overreach. Uh, this party that claims to be the party of small government and of of freedom is is literally attacking every freedom. I mean, especially when it comes to women. You know, to in my opinion, any time that you value the life of the unborn over the life of the existing, the present, the woman, the womb, the, the, the host, you've got your priorities in the wrong order. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you this. What limits would you place on abortion? Well, for starters, Jim, I think that 24 weeks, which was the standard before this ban, is where we should be at. You know, if so you're not in favor of of just a woman deciding in the third trimester, late in the third trimester, to, to uh, have an abortion. Again, I've heard Republicans say that Democrats just want abortion up until the day before the child is expected to be born and then kill it at that moment. That's outrageous. That is absolutely outrageous. I mean, you know, th again, that's just another example of them, you know, gaslighting their base. That's absolutely outrageous. Of course, I would not support that. I believe that if a fetus is viable, um, unless the, the the issue is that the mother's life is at risk, um, that you know, there should be limits. And I believe that the 24 week ban that we had before this overturning was perfectly acceptable and should should we should revert back to that. The other guest earlier in the show was State Senator Joe Gruders uh, in, you know, he and I went back and forth as to whether or not there will be additional measures regarding abortion in the next legislative session to lower it further, to go closer to a fetal heartbeat bill, maybe six weeks or maybe an outright ban on abortion in, in Florida. And, and, you know, he says he doesn't believe that's going to happen, but, you know, he also told me that he didn't believe a year ago that they were going to do it at the last session. So we really don't know. And he finally acknowledged, we don't know where they're going to be this next session in terms of lowering it. They, none of them want to talk about it before the election, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, th there you go. That's what's at stake, right? It's the election. The, Rep the, the Republicans are coming to the realization that they've made a big mistake here when it comes to abortion. I think, you know, overwhelmingly the country, our state uh, supports a woman's right, um, especially with, you know, when you consider these exceptions that should be accounted for. Um, 
so they, I think they've come to the realization that they're, they're on the wrong end of the issue and they're trying to back paddle. Now, there is no question in my mind, nor should there be in any woman's mind, that if Governor DeSantis and my opponent, Eliana Garcia, are reelected in November, they will be emboldened. And from what I understand, there's already talks of a special session in November to deal specifically with abortion. Governor DeSantis has not been shy about giving us um, hints that he plans to push for either a six week or a total ban. And my opponent has been more than clear on the Senate floor and an audio that, and I've been present when she has said that she supports a full ban, zero exceptions. So there is no question that there is an appetite for this and that this is the direction that they're going in. And winning in November will only embolden them to do that. 